Hey all, Taylor here. Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about console gaming on the Alienware AW3225QF. Why would you even want to connect a console to a PC monitor when connecting to your TV is a pretty convenient way to play? Typically, monitors of the past have been pretty PC focused with their display ports and their lower bandwidth HDMI ports, but that changes with this monitor as this monitor offers two HDMI 2.1 ports, one of which supports eARC, as well as having a 4K 240Hz QD OLED screen that supports HDR10, that's hardware that can contend with the higher end OLED TVs of today, and it comes in a 32 inch package, so it's pretty small and versatile. So today let's talk about how to maximize the console experience on this monitor for your console setup. Before we get into it, a quick disclaimer that this video is not sponsored. This video is completely funded and produced by myself. So if you enjoy the video, I really appreciate a like and subscribe. That goes a long way in showing your support to my channel. Thank you so much and let's begin. I wanna start off by talking about the sound on this monitor because one important thing to know about it is it has no sound, no speakers, no ports for sound input, nothing except for one exception, which I'll get to in a moment. So in order to get audio from your console to your monitor, you're going to need to connect something like this, which is the SteelSeries Arctis Pro. I'm connected via USB port there, and this wireless headset supports PS5 and the PS4. So if you're gonna connect it to anything older than that, then you're gonna to start to run into problems. But it will work great for PS4 and PS5, or if you get the Xbox version of this, it will work for that too. So what do you do if you don't have a PS4? You have something a little older like a PS3. Well, then you might have to go for something like the Astro Mixamp, which does connect via USB for power, but it has an optical connection that you can connect to the back of your console which the PS3 will support as long as it has that optical audio cable connection, then something like this could be a solution. But then you start getting into problems when you go further back. What if you have older consoles that don't have any sort of audio interfaces at all? Something like say the Nintendo 64. That's where something like this soundbar comes in real handy. This is a JBL 500 soundbar, which connects to a massive subwoofer wirelessly and includes this HDMI cable. This HDMI cable goes from the out port on the soundbar to the eARC port on the monitor. That is going to be the critical key here. So you disconnect the HDMI port connecting your console to the port and you go ahead and stick this HDMI port right into the eARC port. Once that's connected, we aren't gonna get any picture, obviously, because we've unplugged our HDMI going to our console. And per the instructions, it says to plug this HDMI port into the HDMI in, and that enables it to go into pass-through mode, which should get the audio streaming through the console. Admittedly, in pass-through mode, it isn't the most seamless experience. It's hit or miss whether I get it to turn on. I was able to hit the PS5 PlayStation button here in the center to get the screen to turn on. And even with that, it looks like the dimensions of the screen aren't fitting exactly perfectly. So maybe there is some compatibility issues with HDMI 2.1 in pass-through mode on the soundbar, but there is sound coming through, so that's good. There is another way to do this though, and it's a way I actually prefer. Instead of passing the signal through the soundbar, I'm going to take the HDMI from the console and I'm gonna put it in the second HDMI 2.1 port on the back of the monitor. And what this does is it gives us the picture, but also bridges the audio from both HDMI ports. So we still get that HDMI 2.1 display and audio. This is the preferred method that I choose to use, taking up both HDMI 2.1 ports one for the soundbar, one for the console. One important thing to note with this soundbar is that it has an auto sleep function after 10 minutes, which turns off even when you have it connected to the monitor. 
So one important setting to change to prevent that auto sleep in this monitor is to go all the way to the bottom where it says others go over and there you will see HDMI slash CEC, which is Consumer Electronics Controller. I think that's what it stands for, but basically what it says is give this monitor control over the sound bar, which will prevent it from going to sleep. This will be defaulted to off, set it to on, and you will no longer experience those annoying sleep sessions. Now that I have the console connected to the monitor, the PS5 is automatically gonna know that the monitor is in HDR mode. And going into the monitor's display settings here, you can see that Smart HDR is set to Display HDR True Black. And you can change these various types of HDR as well as enable Dolby Vision down at the bottom. And I do recommend that you upgrade this monitor to the latest firmware to take advantage of all the fixes and features that this monitor has to offer. And if you'd like to know more about these different HDR settings and the picture settings in general, I have another guide that I did previously prior to this one that you might find useful. But the PS5 automatically knows that we are in HDR mode and it's going to prompt to configure this HDR by setting the different displays so that you can see this image. Now, this is gonna be very similar to how Windows calibrates HDR. That is essentially what the PS5 is doing here. So all you gotta do is match it up and then you're good to go. HDR is calibrated and you can now game in HDR. Similarly, you can game in HDR with the PlayStation 4. I have the PS4 Pro here, but unlike the PS5, it is not going to prompt you to calibrate your HDR display, even though the display is in HDR because the menu system runs in standard dynamic range. But you can still calibrate the HDR if you go into the settings here and you go down to sound and screen and then go to video output settings where you will see your resolution and HDR, which is set to automatic, which means on and adjust HDR here. Now this is gonna take you through the PS4's Calibration Wizard 4 HDR, and it's similar to the PS5's, except for this one, you do right and left, which is a bit confusing, but it's still the same. Do you see the image? Yes, continue, and you're done. HDR is configured. Speaking of SDR, let's touch on that for a bit. Go into your monitor's on-screen display, and at the very top game, there's these preset modes, which are going to change the image look as you scroll through them for SDR. Typically, I like to leave this on standard, but you could also set it to something like FPS, where it's gonna really brighten those dark areas. But I also wanna draw attention to this console mode, which is unique here to this monitor. Right now I have it off, but I can go ahead and turn it on. There's two settings, there's on and there's a legacy device. I'll explain the difference between both in a moment, but I'm just gonna flip it on and this is going to default the color profile for SDR back to standard. And if you go back into the on-screen display, you can no longer change that preset. So then what about that legacy mode? What does that mean? Well, legacy mode is pretty much the same thing as console mode, except it disables DSC or display stream compression, which pushes the monitor to 240 Hertz. Now, why you would want to disable this is if you were running on an older console and you had software that would upscale the image to 4K. That comes in handy with this setting here because your upscaling software might have compatibility issues with the DSC setting on this monitor. So that will turn that off, but I just go ahead and leave it on console on because I'm not doing any 4K upscaling with external software. Now, hold up. Didn't I mention something about a Nintendo 64 connecting to this console? How on earth is that possible considering it has HDMI ports. Well, here it is. Here I have an N64 with the old school composite cables, as well as an S video cable. This was a real fun cable back in the day. And you'd be right, this will not connect to this monitor. So what do you do? 
Well, there is a solution to that in the modern world, and that is this thing, which connects to the back of the N64, just like your composite cables would, but it also has a port for an HDMI cable, effectively turning this analog signal into an HDMI signal to the monitor. All you have to do is take this USB cable that was provided, stick it into the USB, mic the micro USB on the side. This essentially gives it power. You have to connect it to a power source. In this case, I'm connecting it to a power strip which has USB ports on it for power. And then you'll see that it has a blue light, which means it's ready to go. Now you just take your HDMI port coming from the monitor, plug that in and give the N64 a power on. I saw the monitor lights turn on, so that means it's getting power. We're gonna see this beautiful pixelated no signal. So just go ahead, power off, stick in your game, power it up, and now we should see the N64 come to life. With audio too, because the soundbar is connected. And there it is, it's working now. Press start and we can go ahead and jump right into a game. Also, this little device has a toggle. Right now it's in four by three mode. I can also hit this and stretch it to 16 by nine so that it takes up the whole monitor. Let's jump back into the PS5 and talk about high refresh rate gaming because the PS5 is the only console that I have that supports higher than 60 hertz refresh rate. To enable high refresh rate gaming on the PS5, you're gonna wanna go to the settings here at the top and then go to screen and video where you will have a menu in the video output settings where you can see your resolution. You can test 1440p output, which by the way, this monitor will not support 1440p on the PlayStation 5. There is VRR, which is supported, and also 120 hertz output. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that console mode, which disables DSC, which allows the monitor to push 240 hertz. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, there is not a PlayStation 6 or 7, so we don't have a console yet on the market that supports 240 hertz but maybe one day. And what better game to show off the 120 hertz capability, none other than Alan Wake 2, which I recommend that you play. If you haven't played it, honestly, guys, it's one of the greatest games I've ever played in my entire life. But that aside, let's go into options and in graphics, you can set it to performance or quality. Quality being a 4K picture at 60 hertz. So let's go ahead and explore that First, because this being a 4K monitor, it is going to support a 4K picture very well. And indeed it does. That 60 hertz, you can feel it if you're coming from a higher refresh rate monitor or settings. You can feel it, it's a little blurry, but the 4K just adds so much more texture. There's so much more texture in Saga's hair and on her clothing and in the trees here in the distance. So 4K looks very nice on this monitor. Let's go and check out the high refresh rate. So I'm going to set it to performance. And now this is rendering at a 1080p image, but it is using 120 Hertz. And the smoothness is immediately obvious. What is surprisingly less obvious is the drop in image quality. Even though this is running at 1080p, the image still looks pretty good, albeit it's a little more creamy, a little less crisp in those textures, but it's not bad. And you can also check out the Hertz that the monitor is running on by going into the game option here and you go into game enhance mode. You will see that there is a frame rate ticker here, which will show you the Hertz that the monitor is running up here. Now, even though I changed it to performance, we're running at 120 hertz, the monitor still says 60 hertz. I don't know if this is a bug 
but I hope that Dell can eventually figure out a way to fix this because I was really expecting that to accurately display the actual hertz that we're running at. Let's go back in time a bit to talk about image quality on an older game. And I'm not talking like N64 old, I'm talking like PS3 old for a classic OG The Last of Us. Yes, this is the vanilla Last of Us, not any remake or anything, and it runs at a glorious 720p. No upscaling here on the PS3. And how does it look? Not bad. Now, the textures aren't going to look great because it's 720p, but at a distance, it looks pretty good. I mean, this is a pretty good looking game for PS3, I will admit. But what really makes it pop is that OLED screen. You can see the darks there are really dark and the brights are very bright. Now keep in mind that the PS3 is not HDR compatible. So this is SDR. So you can change the profiles here if you take it out of console mode. I have it in console mode here and it looks great. 720p. There really is no complaints here. If you just want to pop in a PS3 game, sit down and play on this monitor, it is enjoyable, especially with OLED. And I suspect not many PS3 games have been played in OLED, considering that those were not around whenever the PS3 was in its heyday. So this is a great way to go back and experience some great games on the PS3 with this monitor. And there you have it. That is the full console experience on the Alienware AW30C25QF. As always, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below and I will respond as quickly as I can. I'm usually pretty good about it. So feel free to ask your questions, leave your feedback. If you like the video, leave a like. And if you wanna see more videos like it, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. this game.